So from today we are recording with the new Samsung S9 Plus where previously I used the Huawei P9 Plus Okay, our first one is an LG dishwasher model number oh, LD2040WH So what happens is that even if you close the door, I just bypass the latch now, I can't get it out. We'll do that when we open it up. When you start it, it doesn't want to start. Um, so what I'm assuming is that inside this latch here, there's a switch that tells it the door is closed or not. And that stops the dishwasher from starting. So we're going to take off this panel on the inside of the door. I saw these screws all the way around the side. I'm going to take those off. Um, I see there's even some on the side there. One, two. We'll see what we need to take off to remove it. And once I've done it, I'll show you. There's another one here. And I don't know if there's stuff inside. Oh, still some soap in here okay but anyways let me see what I need to remove which screws to take out to remove this cover I only needed to remove the ones on the bottom side just take note and you will see it's completely loose now you should just take note that if you look at it from this side the last two on this side and the last two on this side is the same type of screws. It's short self-tapping screws. And the rest of them, this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, is a bit longer and doesn't have a point. So just make sure you remember which ones go where. Um, so that was all that was needed to get to where we want it to be. Here's the main PC board. It's a few years old. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Where I think the problem lies is here. With these wires are probably there to lock the door. If it can be locked, I don't know if it can be locked like a washing machine's door. So you can't open it while it's in operation. And I think it tells the PC board that the door is actually closed so that it can start start of the cycle. So inside this somewhere, there's a switch. Um, so I'll open this up and see what is inside. Okay, what I did now is I unplugged these cables. They were plugged into the micro switch that's on the lock. I did manage to reset the lock by just pulling this up and these copper bars in the inside let me just check are loose they can move up and down what's strange to me is that on the side they've got a hole it seems like they are supposed to go into this into this shaft here or on something else because it doesn't matter what position this lock is it always engages the micro switch on here see there's a little tab for the micro switch and it's always engaged it doesn't matter where this lock is even if you press it down with one hand there you go that's still in the same position that should not be the case so I'm gonna see if I can figure out why that is there's a copper screw on that side I push this pin out with my pin punch two screws on here I took them out and now this whole unit comes loose now you can see the latch that presses onto that micro switch and look on the sides there was two little nobbins that went onto 
these copper plates uh, bottom that is now loose and that is what pressed on the micro switch to tell the door it's open or closed so it's a mechanical failure the only thing I can think of that we can do to rectify this is to drill a hole straight through here and put some other type of shaft on here um, so that we can engage these copper plates again um, it's a bit of a long shot and I didn't even know if I'm going to be able to put this thing back together again as there was a spring in here as well that needs to go on the bottom shaft that I pulled out it's going to be really difficult to put this back together but I'm going to try see if I can drill this out and maybe put a, a long bolt in a longish bolt and see if that works I thought about drilling on my bench drill but there's not enough space the chuck of the drill gets on the side before the bit will go through here so I just lightly clamped it in my vise and we are going to attempt to do this just manually luckily it just had to go through here and here um, not at the same time maybe we'll go through at the same time but I don't think so because where it broke off it made some indentations which will be easy to put the drill bit in there so I think I'm going to drill from this side and then from this side and not both straight through Okay, there you go. I think this is an M4 bolt. I'm not sure. It went through nicely and it's not too loose. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut it off on both sides because I don't want the head. And I'm going to see if I've got some nuts to fasten it on the inside. Looking in here, this piece fits to the bottom through here and presses on that switch there. So what we can see is that we can make our bolt just a little bit shorter than this whole space here and that should be the right length to do that. So I'm going to measure this part from here to here and then I'm going to see I've got these bolt shears, this, this um, clamping tool does actually have these bolt shears on it. So I just turn it through on the M4 measure how long we want it here and then hopefully I just <laughs> press down and cut it let's see if it works there you go yeah it's too long so we must make one that's a bit shorter okay so we cut a new one let's see here fits in nicely so we can try to use this one Okay, so rummaging through this pile, which was no easy feat, I got these nuts. What we want to do is, because we don't have much space, we want to fasten them on the inside. I'm going to push this through. Let's check which side I shared. Push this through, and then we're going to put on one of the nuts. Uh, 
I want to use a lock nut configuration, so I'm going to need four nuts. Hopefully they all fit in here. Remember when you've got two nuts up next to each other, they press against each other and then that stops them from moving around. So you, while you're doing this you don't want them to go up against each other because if this one pushes against this one, you won't be able to turn this one further in. Um, so I'm just going to load all four off camera and I'll show you when I'm done. Uh, I restarted because this other one I used had a built-in washer and it was too big, there was no space for all of that. So now we are just basically moving them one at a time to push this bolt to the correct spot so we want these two sides to be the same length I think we went a bit too far we take this one to the edge and this one to the edge and we check again the same. that's about the same so now what you want to do is you want to fasten this one to this side and then fasten this one onto it to lock that one and then we do the same with these two but in this direction obviously okay so these are number sevens what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold this oops sorry I'm going to hold this so it doesn't turn and then we're going to fasten them let's just take that one a bit away and see if we can fasten these ones one a bit I don't know if I accidentally ended up using the wrong one the one I've cut first but they are about half a millimeter too big on each side so I am just filing them off hand file just a little bit every once in a while stopping to check how far I am so I don't go too far I don't want to use the grinder uh, with the flappy, di flappy disc um, because I'm going to take off too much at a time so it's just basically hand filing and checking and hand filing and checking until it fits so laziness overtook me and I did use a grinder um, now it fits in nicely there press this on the button now all that is left to do is try to reassemble this whole thing back together the same way it was taken apart ok so luckily this old spring and bottom shaft can be inserted while this mechanism is upside down must come in like this but you can turn it around and then insert the shaft there you go shaft is in halfway very easy then we can just insert the spring insert the spring push the shaft all the way through and then turn this around and fasten it again Okay, now we can see when the door is in the open position, the micro switch is switched. Now, when you close the door, the micro switch opens, and that should be the fix. I was back on. Let's see. Remember to reconnect those that switch to the wires switch it on, it's now in the open position so if you press the start button it doesn't work let's engage the lock oh. now the door thinks it's closed or the PC board thinks the door is closed let's start it there you go pops your uncle there you go, now we just need to switch, put it all back together again um, this plate comes on here 
um, it just slides in from the bottom and then we need to put the cover back on here's the cover spring loaded the door with the screws we took out and then we should be golden all back together again let's check it I put the power back in again switch it on try to start it doesn't start let's close it yeah There you go. Just out of interest sake, um, you can probably see these LEDs flashing. Now it's only flashing on the camera. I'm looking at it and it is completely still and 100% normal. The reason why it's flashing is probably because of the frequency of the camera, or the frames per second that it's recording at, is matching up with um, our 50 hertz power we've got here in South Africa that's why you see it flashing although it is not flashing at all it's just standing still but anyways we can open it up again try to start it doesn't work close it 100 percent excellent thanks for watching